Susan Bradley here for CSO Online. We're going to take a break on talking about Office 365 for the next month because I want to talk about some workstation hardening that I want you to do. We're going to start first with a foundational service that has been used in computing for many, many years. Server Message Block, or SMB, is an Internet Standard Protocol Windows uses to share files, printers, and serial ports. We use it on a regular basis to share and save files across a network. It's even used over the internet on top of the TCP IP protocol. It's been in use since Windows 95, and in 2019 it's still often found and abused in networks. In fact, if you have SMB v1 still enabled in your network, it can often be used in blended attacks to further cause damage, such as ransomware. In this 2016 blog post, now please note, the concerns over SMB v1 are not new. It's three years old to this blog post. NedPile indicates the following concerns over using SMB v1. When you keep on using it, you lose some key protections, such as you lose pre-authentication integrity, which improves protection against man-in-the-middle attackers. You lose out on secure dialect negotiation. Again, this is another man-in-the-middle protection. You lose out on better encryption. This prevents inspection of data on the wire, man-in-the-middle attacks, and performance is lost. You lose out on using insecure guest authentication blocking. Again, this prevents and protects man-in-the-middle attacks. And you lose out on better message signing. SHA-256 replaces the MD5 as the hashing algorithm. Signing performance increases as a result if you use SMB v2 and v3. As Ned points out in the blog, the nasty bit is that no matter how you, much you secure all of those things, if your clients still use SMB v1, then a man-in-the-middle attack can tell your client to ignore all those protections. You can use either group policy or a pushed-out registry key to disable SMB v1 and push everyone off to SMB v2. And you can review the guidance in KB2696547 to detect if SMB v1 is still in use in your network and gracefully disable it. In Windows 10, you can use the PowerShell command get Windows optional feature dash online dash feature name SMB1 protocol to test if you see if, if you have SMB V1 enabled. I was graciously uh, pleased to see that disabled was what it was said at the office. However, I was less than pleased to see that here at home, where I'm recording this video, I had SMB V1 enabled. You might find out as you disable SMB V2 that older copiers, older printers, and some older network accessible storage may depend on SMB v1. Ned has provided here a blog post that has a list of products that still require SMB v1 and some guidance for how you might work around it. If you can, try to find the firmware or an update from the vendor to disable SMB v1. Work with your vendors, push back on them, try to get them to where they can support something without SMB v1. On the consumer side, if you're a home user like I am, and you have your NASs and your, your multi-use devices and your Sonos music devices, you'll find that you'll still need some SMB v1. Again, you need to look to see if you can update the firmware. For those of you that are IT admins that use home devices, you want to check out Barb's Connected World and has a blog post that talks about the things that you can update. Again, look to see if there's firmware for these devices. She points out an issue with a device that I love, the Sonos speaker, that you have to move local libraries to a NAS box that supports SMB v1 because it still requires SMB v1 to be enabled for local sharing. If you have issues with these home devices, look to the community locations on the vendor's site. You'll probably find another IT admin, just like you, working to get these issues ironed out. Finally, last but not least, you want to make sure that you're not sending outbound SMB packets. You want to make sure that you block outbound port 445 and all relate protocols on the UDP ports 137 to 138 and TCP port 139. Most modern firewalls automatically do this, but it's wise to just make sure and test to make sure that your firewalls are set appropriately. So now's the time to take stock in your environment. Do you still need SMB v1? Can you get yourself up to SMB v2 or v3? Take the time to look at your network, evaluate, even check your home network because it too can be vulnerable. Until next time, thanks for being an insider on CSO Online. This is Susan Bradley.